Hey, Conan. It's me, Conan. Okay. Can I say all that again? When you shot that, it was April 2020. And now, it's September 2022. Now, don't worry. You finished that camper. You did a nice job on it. Turned out great. But... It's not gonna be an eight week camper rebuild. And it's still not gonna be quite done. But I'm reaching back in time today to offer some advice and hope that you can perhaps avoid some of the mistakes. All the windows are in, all of them. That you inevitably make. So let's flash back to the future and talk about a few things. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm standing in front of our 1968 Playmore one more time because uh, in this video, I wanna reach back in time and I wanna speak directly to myself from two years ago in 2020. Conan, so, I know you have big ideas. You don't do everything right. You try to, you think it through, you do a pretty good job planning it out, but there's some mistakes that were made. And I'm here in the future to tell you what to avoid. Let's do a little housekeeping first of all. Um, buy a better quality microphone. Those early videos. So we know exactly where they're gonna need to go back in. They're hard to watch. You're hard to hear. You've gotten better at talking to the camera, yes. But just the audio. Mm. I'm okay with the camera you were using. Just please, please buy a better microphone. So first of all, rent a workspace to work on these things. I can't tell you how many hours of my life I have wasted putting tarps on and off of campers. And I know you think, hey, if this YouTube thing really takes off, maybe I'll make enough. I can pay the monthly rent on a space. <clears throat> you're not there yet. You're not there yet. It's been two years. And you're still putting tarps on and off of campers. And it is the most annoying thing in the world. <laughs> Just, just do it. Just do it. Just spend the money. Just spend the money. Why haven't I done that? 2022 Conan could use this advice. Why, why did you not hammer out some of these dents? Or, barring that, why didn't you replace this tiny little panel right here? Hemet Valley RV could have taken care of you. This would not have been expensive. Now granted, I don't know if you could get this um, little uh, dimple texture but I know you can get this Mesa pattern. It would have been easy enough to do. Also, I know in 2020 you're trying to save money. You're trying to do this as cheaply as possible for obvious reasons. But I really don't like this roof. It's got some hail damage. That's not the worst part. The worst part is those seams on the roof. This is not a continuous roof. It's um, made up of several interlocking panels, which is fine but one of those seams runs right through the vent area and I know that's gonna leak water at some point. I just, I just keep thinking, if I would've just replaced that whole thing, it wouldn't have been a problem. Another thing on the exterior, these windows. I know you worked real hard on them, you did a nice job, you really cleaned them up, you got most of that old paint on them, made them nice and shiny, uh, replaced the window panes that were broken. I hate to tell you, you're gonna go through all that. And then some of these panes are going to break. And the reason they're going to break, I'm going to tell you this, it's, it's not because of how you screwed this to the camper, it's how you screwed these panes back together. And these side wings turned in a little bit, putting a bunch of tension on these glass panes and broke some of them. And I'm also going to tell you, after two years, you still haven't gone back and fixed those ones that have broken. Because <laughs> you're that upset about it. You also never found the proper top seal for these windows, and you still haven't done that. Because you know, to do that, you're gonna wind up having to go back and do a bunch more work on these windows. The other thing you didn't do, and it's, it's not your fault, you didn't realize this, you thought it was something somebody had added at some point, but you didn't replace the sealant at all the joints on the window frame, which means these windows leak. Now, now, granted, you know, you go back and you try to seal a little bit from the outside, and this is not, this is not a foolproof job of sealing this, because you really need it sealed from all sides. So, at some point, 
you are going to have to take all these windows back out and take them all back apart and fix that. And that also means when you do that, you're going to have to put little dowels in every one of these screw holes to take up the slack for the screws that have been drilled into the wood. It's going to be a process. It's going to be weeks of work and you're never going to do it. Maybe you're going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> Depends on how hard up I get for content. Oops. Here's another thing that you probably shouldn't have done. There's a reason why you don't paint the J rail that has been, what do they call it? Anodized, mil spec, whatever. I didn't properly prepare this J rail to be painted. I just stuck it on there and then I sprayed over it. Well, that paint is coming off. What you should do is you should paint the camper and then you should come back and put this J rail on and just leave it a nice bright silver. It'll look fine. Trust me, that's, that's how these things look. Don't paint the j rail. Here's a big one, buddy. This right here, getting this license plate. So I know you went to the DMV and they led you to believe that it would be as easy as titling a vintage car if you even wanted to worry about titling it because it's such a small camper, maybe you don't even need to. Well, I'm here to tell you, in the state of Kansas, you need to title this. This is not a utility trailer, this is a camper. That's it, that's the end of the story. So before you go and do all this work to it, go ahead and sort this out. So once you've gotten to this point, you're gonna need a lawyer. He can take care of this for you, but it's gonna cost you some money. Before you get all into it like this, I would say, go ahead and try this process yourself. It'll be a wonderful learning experience, plus you're probably gonna need it again in the future. That's enough on the exterior. Um, you did a pretty good job overall. I think, I think it turned out nicely. But you know, you are going to make a video and it's going to wind up being your most popular video. And it's about all the mistakes that you made putting this back together. But you did it before you ever did the interior. So you'd never talk about what you did on the interior in that video. So let's move inside. Let's talk about all the things we did wrong in there. So let's talk about something that you notice first off when you walk in the door. Really when you open the door. The front face of this drawer is missing. Why is it missing? Because you decided not to take the time to go to the store and get actual wood screws that would work proper for screwing that on. You just thought you would use some that you had sitting around. So my advice, go across the street to the hardware store. It's not that far. Buy some proper wood screws that will actually draw this face up and keep it in place. Because a big drawer like this puts a lot of pressure on those screws when the little latches are right here. So as you're driving down the road, that face is all that's holding this door from going wham. And that door's gonna break off. The smaller drawer, this one, perfectly fine. No problem at all. Too big, wrong screws. What I'm saying is, take the time to get the right materials to do the job correctly so you don't have to do it a second or third time. Let's also talk a little bit about the hardware that you chose to put in here. Now, I still like these little pulls here. I don't care so much for these up here because they have this little edge bit. See if I pull it down, you can see how it's shaped. So these little bits that stick out Constantly grab your pants or any kind of cord that you have out here, like your cell phone charger or things like that. And I am constantly hooking stuff on these. I still love how they look, and they were a great price. They were on Amazon, but I would not use these again. These maybe. These no. Uh, but these little drawer pulls are even worse because they are super sharp here at the edges. And they're right where you get on and off of the bed and I have scraped my leg on those so many times not badly but uncomfortably so number one don't use sticky outy hardware and number two don't use sharp hardware it looks nice but you're not gonna like it so let's talk about your water system this seems like a great idea you got it from a, a van life build and I think this would be really happy if you were stopping on the side of the road uh, just in random locations you'd have your you know, water there to go. 
um, since installing this, I have never actually used it the way it was designed to be used. Everywhere you've ever camped has had a water hookup. Instead of being able to just take your filter and your hose and hook it up and away you go, you've been filling this tank, bringing it back here, priming the pump, trying to get it to work, finding a leak, trying to troubleshoot the leak, and it has never worked very well or at all. I mean, it works. It does work, technically, if you have a loose definition to work, but it doesn't work for you. Uh, and it takes up this huge amount of space. Look, look at all that. Look at, look at how big these stupid things are. Think about all the stuff you could be storing under here. The other thing that doesn't work about this is I have noticed when camping that I'm not drinking enough water, and I believe it's because I'm trying to drink a nice hot tank of water when I could be getting nice cool water directly out of the ground and into the camper that way. So what you're going to do some point in the near future, I've got the items, they're in the Amazon car. I just haven't pulled the trigger on them yet. You're going to replace all this with a city water inlet and it's going to be a lot easier than you think it is. And it's going to give you all the space back. Okay, let's talk for a minute about your gaucho style bed. Gaucho style meaning uh, one that converts, it, you know, slides in and out. Uh, your mattress is made in two pieces so that one piece becomes the back of your couch. You're thinking, oh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to keep all that floor space? It'd be nice and you feel nice and open in here. Uh, you know, it'd be a couch. You can sit on it, eat lunch, and then pull it out and sleep on it. No, you never do that. You always leave it set out because no one wants to bother with converting it into a mattress and then back into a couch and back and forth back and forth back and forth just build it fixed build it fixed and also don't build your cabinets under it with your gaucho bread converted into a couch because what you're going to find is when it's converted into a bed there's no way to access that stuff that this has changed a lot from where you left it and now it is a nice fixed bed it has this fancy slat frame and there's even an air conditioner under it so let's talk about the air conditioner for a second now I know your opinion when you started this is that you don't intend to camp when it's hot, these campers aren't designed for an air conditioner, and it's just an unnecessary addition. And I still agree with you. I still 100% agree with you. But we put it in anyway because who can resist the urge to do something for no good reason? But I'm happy with how it turned out. I hope, past Conan, I hope you're impressed with what you are able to do. Let's talk on our electrical a little bit. So you elected to only install a 15 amp inlet on the outside of the camper because you weren't going to have uh, an air conditioner or an electric stove or a microwave. So you put a 15 amp inlet on the outside and now I've gone and put an air conditioner in here. So what I need to do at this point is to convert that uh, 15 amp to a 30 amp. And so I'm going to do that very soon. Why didn't you just put 30 amp on the outside? You've got two breakers, two 15 amp breakers on that box. And you've got one going to your 12 volt system, which has a 15 amp power supply. And the other is going to your one electrical outlet on the other side. Now that right there should be a no, no having 15 amps in and potentially being able to pull 30 amps off of it that's obviously going to trip the breaker at the pedestal before you overload the uh, cable at least you hope but it is a a bad idea it is poor form you should have made that a uh, 30 amp inlet and just used a 30 amp cord with an adapter to go to a 15 amp outlet you kind of knew what you were doing when you did it you knew what you were doing was wrong and you've gotten away with it but that's not always the way you want to live your life additionally you put a 12 volt outlet there and you put a normal 110 outlet there and you've never used the 12 volt outlet because it lights up when you plug something into it and it's right by your bed which is a poor decision so maybe spend a little time 
checking out your 12 volt outlets to make sure they're not going to light up in an annoying way when you plug things into them. Two light fixtures on the walls have USB style ports in them that you can charge your phone off of and that's honestly all you've ever done. So maybe you don't even need that 12 volt outlet. You don't have a battery on here so what do you need the 12 volt outlets for? Let's talk about these cabinets real quick. Overall, really like them. Really happy with how they turned out. They've been really useful. This up here was a bad idea. Trying to caulk that seam where it meets the ceiling was just uh, an exercise in futility. What you should have done is put some more of that uh, welting or gimp in there. And that's also why you generally want to install your cabinets before you put your ceiling on because it's a whole lot harder to get that up there securely with the welting without messing things up cabinets after the ceiling's gone in so you did the same thing with your next camper so that's going to be a fun thing to solve it's not going to be caulking this time so conan those few things aside i want you to know i am actually really happy with this camper it tows well it's comfortable to sleep in it does everything you as a family need you know you can always fix things and that's maybe the greatest thing about doing a renovation on a vintage camper yourself and doing all the work yourself is that you're not going to be afraid to tear into it to change something after the fact to make it better and fit the way you camp even better and if i can one more little piece of advice don't take for granted the year that you will have off because when it's gone and you go back to work you may find yourself wishing for another year off and for everyone else thanks for watching make sure and like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video